Hey guys, Chris Long here with BMW Trailer Hitches. And today we're going to install the turnover ball gooseneck hitch in this 2020 GMC three quarter ton pickup truck. Now the correct part number for this particular application is the GNRK 1020. If you need help making sure that you've got the right hitch for your particular truck, be sure to use our hitch finder tool on the website. And as always, you can also call us at the 1-800 number and we'll be more than happy to help. Now the first couple of steps on this installation is to drop the spare wheel and tire and get the heat shield out of the way so that we've got room to work. Let's get started. With the spare tire heat shield out of the way, now we're going to get this heat shield out of the way, which is the one between the tailpipe and the bottom of the bed. There are four bolts that hold this on. One is right here above the rear tube cross member. The other one's here on the front tube cross member. And then we also have two that come in on the top of the passenger side frame rail. One's located right here in this area, and the other one's right up here. So let's get this out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the three screws that hold the fender well liners in the truck, uh, if your truck is equipped with these, to get them out of the way so that we'll have more access between the frame and the bed in this area for later parts of the install. And what we'll do is pull these back to expose this area here. Now you'll notice that General Motors has placed this bed support channel right over the center line of the axle on this generation of truck. Because of their placement of this structure, we've designed the center section to be used one way on long beds where the ball will be in front of that cross member and behind the cross member on short beds. So the measurements that you're seeing in your installation instructions are correct. And on short beds, that hole, even though it's behind this cross member, is in the appropriate location that General Motors has already specified. All right, the next step is to mark the bed out for the placement of our four inch hole. Now it's very important to reference your installation instructions to make sure you're following the proper measurement. There is a separate measurement for the long bed versus any other bed, which is considered a short bed. This particular truck is a short bed model and my measurement is 37 and 1 8 inch. I'm gonna hook that right on the back edge of the bed with my tape measure right through the center of the bed center line. And I'm going to allow myself about another sixteenth of an inch since we have a spray in bed liner for the thickness of that liner there. And now I'm going to measure to make sure that I'm perfectly centered left to right in the truck. I accomplish this by using a little six inch ruler here and measure from the fender well to the edge of my ruler on both sides. And it looks like I need to shift towards the driver's side of the truck just a touch. Remeasure. Right at 22 and just over 7 eighths. Same on that side. So that's my left to right measurement. Go ahead and mark it. Okay. Center punch that spot. And now I'm going to go ahead and drill a very, very small pilot bit since this is a spray in liner, just so that after I drill my initial hole, I can recheck my measurements to make sure I didn't wander before I go on up to the larger uh, pilot bit size. A quick installation tip. It's a good idea to step your pilot bits up in size until you reach the final diameter of whatever size bit you're using for your arbor on your hole saw. In this case, for me, it's a quarter inch. And this way you can double check your measurements to make sure that you're not wandering from left to right or forward and aft. I'm doing my last cut here, my last drill with a quarter inch bit. And then I'll do one final measurement. This, is, this way you've got the ability to make adjustments left or right and forward and back if you need to. Perfect, we're ready for our four inch hole. Now 
Now we're going to cut the four inch hole in the bed. Be sure to use safety glasses for this particular step. And I like to get my pilot bit lined up with the pilot hole that I drilled earlier and run the saw backwards just a little bit to establish a cutting groove in this spray and bed liner material. Like so. Okay, now we're gonna switch the drill to forward and actually drill the hole. After cutting the hole in the bed, you'll want to make sure and go ahead and eliminate the tail filings that are in that area so that the center section can come up into the hole properly. You can use round files, deburring tools, power tools. Just be sure and get all the tail filings out. And once you're done with that, you can actually go a little bit above and beyond by spraying some clear lacquer or clear enamel paint on that rough edge and that'll protect that from rust and corrosion. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start filing this now. When you check for, deep, for burrs, and tail filings with your fingers. Don't run your fingers around the hole. Always check uh, from a direct motion like this to find where those are at, otherwise you could cut yourself. Before we move on in the installation, we need to drop the exhaust so that we have more room to work between the exhaust pipe and the bed for the center section. We're going to use a pry tool and some soapy water to remove this exhaust hanger here at the back and these forward two ones right up here and that'll give us the room that we need. Now we'll begin the process of installing the cross members. Take one of the two cross members out of the kit as well as one of your cross member brackets. And you'll notice that these cross member brackets have an open cavity. That's the side that faces up. So that would be upside down. This is right side up. And this cross member will lay down inside of this channel. To orient it properly, you'll notice that inside of the cross member, one of the walls is the welded seam where that comes together. Once you determine which wall has that welded seam, that is the surface of the cross member that lays down inside the cross member bracket. So that is matched up the way it should be. I'm gonna put this on the floor so that we can put our hardware in and tighten it. Now with this laid down firmly on a flat surface like the ground or a workbench, um, we're gonna put the hardware together. Now it's important to make sure that the hole in the cross member is perfectly centered in the slots of the cross member bracket, like so. Put your bolts through, verify that they are in the center of the slots, press those in. You can start the nuts on the back side. You want those bolts to come in from the front back so that the threaded portions are facing the rear of the truck. And then I'm going to place my knee and, and press down on this to make sure that we don't have a gap between the two pieces and snug these up with the impact. And now we're going to go ahead and torque these to 150 foot-pounds. That's the reason why we're doing this on the floor is to give you a good solid place to put it. We tighten them up now because it'll be hard to do up in the truck because this is where the fuel tank is at. Now we're going to put that pre-assembled front cross member into position. Feed the end without the cross member bracket up over the tailpipe in the top of that shock tower and then position the driver's side bracket up over those brake lines and then place it into position on top of the frame right there and then just let the passenger side of this rest on top of the exhaust so that we can get our other bracket on. All right, now you'll get another one of your cross member brackets, put it up over the top of the tailpipe and lift the cross member up high enough that you can get up underneath it and then 
right up here. You want to feed that up over the passenger side frame of the truck and then hold that up to where these holes here line up. Now you'll put your bolts in from the front, just like so. And right now you're just going to put the nuts on these and leave them finger tight. Now you're going to take the last cross member and pre-assemble it the same way you did on the front one with a cross member bracket. Be sure to have the seam in the cross member tube facing down into this carrier, but bring your bolts in where the threaded portions of the bolts are facing the front of the truck. With this pre-assembled, you do not have to have this tightened yet. Just have it hand tight. Put it up over the driver's side frame rail. Hold this up and then take your last remaining cross member bracket, put it up into position, and put your bolts in facing the front. You'll put the nuts on there, hand tighten those, and then slide these out of the way for the center section. Before you go up with the center section, you'll need to install the latch pin assembly. You want to make sure that this is on the driver's side of the center section. You'll notice I have this block of wood here. This represents the cab. That's one point of reference. The other is this cross member cutout in the center section. On short bed models, you want this cutout to be aimed towards the cab. On long bed models, it'll be positioned with the cutout away from the cab. This is a short bed model that we're on, so we'll have this towards the cab. Take your latch pin assembly and insert it into the hole provided in the center section. Slide that all the way in so that the pin itself goes through the ball socket. Install the carriage bolts in the provided slots and holes at the top. And go ahead and start the nuts. And you'll go ahead and tighten these down. Now as you tighten these, be sure that you're holding the latch pin assembly as far inboard as it will go. And go ahead and tighten those down. Next, you're going to take the two washer plates in your kit and the remaining four bolts and install those bolts into those plates and go ahead and put the plate with the bolts through the rear cross member. Make sure that the forward edges of those bolts are flush with the forward edge of that cross member. I've already got the front one put together for you here. Let's see what I'm talking about as I bring it in from the front just like so and then make sure those bolt heads or those the ends of those bolts are flush with that rear face of the bar that front cross member forward bring the rear cross member rearward to give us room to go up with the center section you can see i've got my overhead lifting device into position take your center section again with short bed models the uh, cutout faces the front to go around your cross member long beds would be opposite Bring this up into position, get it in the hole that you cut in the bed. Be sure your latch pin was open when you go up. Latch it into your overhead lifting device. Now I'm gonna pull that up tight from the bed before we move on. With the center section held snug against the bottom of the bed, now we can put our cross members into position. You can now push those bolts all the way through because you don't have to worry about the center section hitting the bolts. I'm gonna slide this rear cross member forward into its position and then you'll just put the nuts on these hand tight for now we'll follow a tightening sequence later you'll do the same thing on the other side i'm going to go ahead and bring the front cross member forward now you'll see that these bolts come close to that cross member give yourself enough room to get the nut up in there between the cross member and the center section and get it started by hand and then run those up snug as well. And then of course repeat that on the driver's side of the truck. Now 
Now, if your truck is equipped with fender well liners, you will have wanted to go ahead and take the three screws out that we mentioned earlier in the video. For this particular shot, we went ahead and took the fender well liner out just so that you can see things better, but it's not necessary to take the liner out. The next step is to put in the, the eight bolts, two per cross member bracket in through the vertical portions of the cross member bracket and the provided threaded holes that GM gives you in the frame. You can see I've already done these two here at the driver's side front. And then I'll demonstrate here with the, path, the driver's side rear, just drop the bolt in. You've got tight quarters to work in here. But just take the bolt, get the end of the bolt lined up with the slot in the cross member bracket and drop it down into the threaded holes in the frame. Now you may have to shift the hitch around a little bit to get these to thread down into the threads but they'll thread right down, be sure they're not cross-threaded, and you should be able to thread these down by hand to where they look like the ones that right here on the front. Do that at all four corners. Now with all the hardware in place, it's time to start the tightening process. Be sure to follow the tightening sequence that's outlined in the installation instructions. It's very important to follow that sequence. The first two steps deal with making sure that the center section is properly centered in the four inch hole that we cut in the bed and that there's an overhead lifting device pulling good pressure of the hitch up against the bottom of the bed. We've already done those two steps. The next step is to tighten our first series of bolts, which are the two bolts that come in through the rear cross member and center section and the front two bolts that come in from the cross members through the center section. And we're gonna tighten these down very tight with either power tools or hand tools. You're not gonna to torque these just yet. We'll torque everything after the, tor the tightening sequence has been followed. It's just good and tight. Switch to the fronts. Next, we wanna make sure that the hitch is square in the truck before we continue. You can measure from the front cross member to this bed hat channel right here and get a measurement there. You can also take a, a second measurement between that hat channel and the center section here and then compare those measurements on the opposite side, there and there, and get that centered up and squared on the vehicle and then we can continue the tightening process. The next step in the tightening process is to tighten the bolts that hold the cross member brackets to the frame. There are eight of them, two at each corner. It works best to take an 18 millimeter ratchet wrench, get in there on top of those bolt heads and tighten these down. Again, these don't have to be torqued yet. Just tighten them as tight as you can by hand. And then repeat that for the other bolts. The next series of bolts in the tightening procedure are the bolts that hold the cross members and the cross member brackets together. Now, if you'll remember, these two on the driver's side front have already been torqued. We did that when this assembly was on the ground earlier in the, in the process. So that's only gonna leave us tightening the two that are on the opposite side of the hitch and then the four that are on the rear cross member. So let's go ahead and tighten these up now. All right, now that we've got all of our fasteners tightened, it's time to torque everything to specifications. You'll tighten all of the large 5 8 bolts to 150 foot-pounds and all of the metric M14 fasteners to 110. Now you'll notice that these fasteners right here are a little hard to get to. You're probably not gonna be able to get a torque wrench and a socket up into this area. You've got two options. You can take an 18 millimeter socket and loosen all eight of the bed bolts and lift the bed up high enough to get a torque wrench and socket into these areas to get the exact 110 foot pound torque. Or if that's not possible on your installation, you can take an 18 millimeter regular or ratchet wrench and tighten these bolts as tight as you possibly can by hand. Right there. And that'll get you very, very close to that 110 spec. 
After you've torqued all of, the sp all of the bolts one time, we ask you to go around and retorque them a second time just to make sure that nothing has settled on you. Now we're going to install the latch pin release handle. Be sure to pull the latch pin out and engage it into its open position right here. And then take the handle and insert it over the top of the driver's side frame rail and put the curled portion of the handle on the forward side of this gray tab right there. Put the bolt through the hole and start the nut. Now just before you tighten this, hold the rod up to where it's just under the bed lip flange out in the fender wheel and that'll hold the handle in the proper position. If your truck is equipped with fender well liners, the next step is to trim the fender well liner so that you can access the release handle. As you can see, I've already marked and cut out the section that we need. What you'll need to do is reference the installation instructions for a short bed or long bed truck, mark out the area that's to be trimmed based on those measurements, and you can cut it out with either a razor blade knife or some tin snips, and it simply comes up out of the way, and now we can reach in there and activate our handle. Then be sure to go ahead and re-secure the fender wheel liners with these three screws. Now we're going to install our safety chain U-bolts. And you can do this one of two ways. I'll demonstrate both methods. You'll see that there are four holes in the center section for those U-bolts. And we're going to take an 11 16 drill bit on this particular model of turnover ball. And you can drill that hole from the bottom all the way up through the bit. Now, you'll find that that could leave a little bit of an aggressive edge on the top of the bed. So another method is to use that same bit, bit to give yourself a little bit of a divot. Like that right there. And then you can change out bits to a smaller pilot bit. In this case, I'm just going to use an eighth. Line up your eighth inch drill bit into that divot and give yourself a pilot hole from underneath. Now you can enlarge the hole from the top down and that'll give you a cleaner appearance from up in the top of the bed. Drill all four of those holes out in whichever method you desire and then you can drop the safety chain U-bolts in from the top. All right, we're almost finished. All we have left to do now is to put your safety chain U-bolt springs into position. Use the larger part of the spring facing upward. Put it over the U-bolt. Hold that up into place with the forefinger and start the lock nut on the end of the stud. And now we're going to run that nut up to where it's just flush with the end of the U-bolt. Check it. Right there, nice and flush. You'll repeat that on the remaining three U-bolt studs. After that's complete, now is the, the best time to go ahead and rehang our exhaust, uh, put the spare wheel and tire heat shield back into place, um, put the spare wheel and tire back up, just basically restore the truck back to it was when we first started the preparation for installation. The last step of the installation is to prepare the ball for towing. Take the white lithium grease that we provided you in your owner's pamphlet, squeeze out just a little bit on your forefinger and lube the four corners of the ball. Get a nice light coat on those four corners. Disengage the latch pin from the driver's side fender wheel, insert the ball and engage the latch pin. You're ready to tow a trailer. When you want to store the ball, disengage the latch pin, flip it upside down and stow it for use. Re-engage your latch pin. And in true BMW fashion, a hitch when you need it, the level bed when you don't. <laughs>